Hey, what's going on? So, let's add some more finishing touches to our Power Girl piece and we can call it done. So, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one more little um, section to the comet right here. See, we had this like main and mid section, then we had this little back section, and I'm just gonna add one more piece up here just to give this corner a little more, um, a little more interest. So, I'm gonna go into my common images. And let's just see what would be a good piece to grab. Um, let's try this one. Let's try right about this. Just gonna make a really rough selection with the path tool. And that should be all I need. Now I'm just going to add some adjustments so the color matches uh, matches the rest of the comet. Let's add a soft light layer and just darken some of that back, this back area up. Actually, maybe have that on multiply. Yeah, let's do multiply. Let's get a little closer here so we can see what we're doing. And I'm gonna put a mask on that. And I'm just gonna blend this with the rest of the comet. And actually maybe get rid of this whole piece right here. And let's tweak those colors a little bit because they're still not quite matching. I want to get rid of some of these highlights because the sun's coming in from this direction and it really wouldn't hit any highlights over here. Let's make that a little bigger. Maybe angle it a little bit that way. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my, uh, my main comment section and put a new layer on that, set it to multiply, and I'm just gonna darken out around the highlights, just to kind of pop that a little more forward. Yeah, I want like a really rocky, bumpy uh, looking comet. So this helps add some depth. Maybe turn that down a little bit. And I need to darken up this part here too. I think that's a little too light. So I'm just going to paint over it on a soft light layer. And a little bit on multiply too. Just to darken that up. All right, so I'm going to turn off that little piece for now, and I'm going to go back into my main comet layer, and I have some, I had some comet rock texture here, so I'm just going to take a little bit of a sample of that. Whoop. Take a little bit of a sample of that. Copy that, turn that layer back on, and let's see. Put that in front. Just warp that a bit. 
And I'm gonna mask that off a little bit and get that to blend in with the rest. Yeah, that's looking good. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. And we'll just darken this up a little bit. So, gonna make a new layer. And let's try soft light. Just paint some black on that. Just to darken those edges up a little bit. And maybe get a sample of this, uh, this more red color and paint that in there. Maybe turn that opacity down a little bit more. And maybe do a color overlay on that. Let's see. Try to darken maybe. Just to darken the whole thing up a little bit more. That's good. And let's make a multiply layer and just darken up the edges right here. And so now let's bring on our back comets. We're gonna have some smaller comets here in the background coming through. Uh, maybe like one here, one here, and maybe another there. So let's do that next. So I got these comet renderings here. Let's just start grabbing these and dropping them in and see how they look. So let's go into our background layer and I'll make another group in our background layer and call it back. Back comments. Oh, I think it's only one M comments. There we go. And paste that in. And let's put that on screen to knock out the black. And that lightens it up a lot so you can barely see it. I'm going to put in uh, like a little asteroid or comet down here. So we have the, uh, the meteor and the fire trail. And we'll grab this one. Put that on screen. This one kind of has a nicer color to it. It's a little more vibrant and these are a little more washed out. So maybe we just want to use this one. Or maybe we could combine them. That's a possibility. We could just stack them on top of each other. Let's try that for now. And let's go back into one of my asteroid images. Let's try this one. And let's try maybe grabbing this one. Just gonna quick select this to make it easy on ourselves. That looks good. Let's copy that. And I'm gonna bring that in. And let's do an overlay on that. Of like kind of a uh, reddish orange. a little more red and I want to blur that out a little bit so it looks like it's falling really fast and I'm gonna put on a motion blur just see how that looks it's not bad maybe turn down the color overlay a little bit 
and I'm gonna lighten that up a little bit. Let's see, maybe duplicate that and blur it out one more time with motion blur. I'm gonna erase the bottom part of that motion blur just so we kind of get the, the trail. Let's turn that color overlay up. Maybe double that up so we can see it a little better. And I'm just gonna flatten that actually. All right, I think it's a pretty good comet effect. So mm, I could just be lazy and duplicate it. That is the lazy way to go. But we don't necessarily want to be lazy. Being lazy doesn't make good artwork. So let's go back into our original pre-blurred comet layer. And let's rotate that a little bit. Maybe use uh, the warp on it a little bit. Just to change the shape up a little bit so it's not so obviously the same picture. So let's go back to blur. Or motion blur. And I'm just going to turn down the opacity all together a little bit because this comet's farther away so we want a little lighter than this comet put a mask on that and fade some of that back And let's do one more comment in the back. So I'm gonna duplicate that one more time. Maybe put it back here. Make it a lot smaller. Maybe move this um, up here, maybe? Up there? Down there? Here? Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's move it right there. I think I like that. Let's try it right there. Uh, we have our back comets laid in. So next, um, I'm going to paint in some white on uh, the background layer, just to help kind of frame her. I'll, uh, I'll show you what I mean. Gonna make a new layer. And just gonna paint in some white right about there. And maybe some there. Yeah, and that kind of puts a nice little white frame around her, but I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. Maybe go back in here. Just take some of that out. Turn it down a little bit more. All right. And I think I wanna make the blue right behind her a little more intense. So I'm gonna make another layer and let's pick a blue right about there and I'm just gonna paint this in right around her let's see put that on like soft light maybe or overlay Put on soft light, but turn it down a bunch. So 
So let's see if we can add some nice color overlay effects. So let's go to our overlays group and add an adjustment. Go to color lookup. And maybe there's a nice preset in here that uh that we can use. Uh, oh, I like that. I do like that. I like that, but it's too intense. It's definitely too intense, so we gotta turn that down a bunch. Maybe even more. And this is all just like personal preference. I mean, I can make it higher. If I want, I can make it lower. Just whatever I think looks nice. Now, if you remember from last time, I, uh, I flattened my Power Girl image because I forgot to start the file in RGB. Instead, I started in CMYK. So uh, I didn't realize it until I was like 85% done with the image. So I couldn't have just uh, converted that layered CMYK file in the RGB because it would have screwed up some transparencies and stuff. So I flattened my Power Girl first and then I changed it to RGB. But having a flat image of the entire character is actually good because we can add some effects to it in the filters that we couldn't add to it if it was a, you know, this big complex layered group. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to go into First, I'm going to convert that into a smart object. And then I'm going to go to filter, blur gallery, and try a little bit of a field blur. And if you don't know, a field blur allows you to blur certain sections of your images out and keep others sharp. It allows you to very precisely choose what, um, what sections to blur out and what sections to not blur out. So I want to keep her face pretty sharp so I'm gonna put a point there a point there and a point there and say there and I'm gonna turn the blurs off of these points so this section here is gonna stay sharp because that's kind of our focal point and maybe down here I'm gonna blur it out a little bit just a little bit and make another one here. But again, I'm gonna turn down that blur pretty far. Make another here and turn down that blur pretty far. But I'm gonna make two right on the edge here and turn the blur up. Just so her edge of her leg is a little blurred out. Here too, gonna make another one, blur it out a little more. So let's try blurring our city out a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. So again, let's convert that to a smart object and I'm not gonna do a field blur I'm just gonna do a box blur over the entire thing hmm that does help pop her forward but maybe that's too much let's try that so let's try adding a little more detail to our comet uh, so you would imagine that if this comet is flying to Earth or falling to Earth and she flies up to go stop it, uh, when she impacts on it, there's going to be some uh, little pieces breaking off probably. So let's see if we can't simulate some little kind of chunks and, uh, you know, crumbly crumbs falling off. So let's go into these pictures here. And I got this picture and this one. Let's uh, let's grab this one first. 
let's just get like this section right here. And let's go into our channels. I'm gonna duplicate our blue layer. Turn up our blacks, turn down our whites. And let's, let's select that and select the inverse of that because we're selecting the white when we do that. Let's copy that. And let's bring that in and see how it looks. And you see, we got a lot of uh, kind of like bright edges here and that does not look too good, but we might be okay. Uh, we could go back and refine our selection, but let's try to use this as is. And I'm just gonna put a motion blur on this. Maybe scale that up some. And let's put a clipping mask on that. And do a soft light layer. And let's just go over these in the back with black. Mask some of this out. Let's try, let's go to that other one. And just grab some of this. And let's see if we can get away with just putting that on multiply. Maybe copy that and put some of that back here. So you can take some of that. And let's put that on multiply. Put a bit of a motion blur on that. And I might go back into this and add some more little pebbles and chunks of rock falling down, but I think we're good for now. But I'm also not sure about the city, whether I like it blurred out or not blurred out. Like, I like I like how the blurred city kind of pops her forward. That is nice, but I also like the sharp city. I also like it like that, where everything is kind of sharp and clean and crisp. I could go either way. I'm kind of on the fence right now. I think they both have their, um, uh, their benefits. But uh, what do you like? You tell me. Do you like Blurred or Unblurred City? Which is better, in your opinion? But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and take care.